So in this video, I am going to go over how to get the most out of this bad boy uh, coming up next. So Logic just updated to the 10.6 version and an amazing thing happened, right? Now we're able to use this as, as a dedicated controller for Logic and it's absolutely amazing. Now you can do session mode, you can trigger loops. But one thing that is tricky is getting the four different sequencers to work with four different tracks in Logic. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the best way to get this done. Super simple and yeah. All right, guys, let's get to it. Let's unlock this bad boy. All right, guys, the first thing that we need to do is, uh, you know, we need to get some some instruments here. Let me bring in the Ultra B Retro Synth Alchemy, the Drum Synth, and I have a sound that I created that I like a lot. And this is the one that we're gonna be using, which is the Simple Perk Synth. If you downloaded my previous uh, template, you, or you have this sound there. You have all the different sounds. So if they're all activated, right? If I press this, they all sound the same. So like right now, it doesn't matter what sequencer I'm using, but they're all getting active, right? Which is a little bit of an annoying thing because you have a four channel sequencer here with the launch pad. And, you know, once you unlock that, it's just like the, the possibilities are absolutely amazing. The other thing that is absolutely beautiful is the fact that now with the new object, of Logic, we're able to like use scene modes and everything. It's kind of like similar to the workflow of Ableton Live. <sighs> There's four parts to this process. Okay, first part, super simple. We go over here, you know, we go into MIDI. We want to make sure that all the inputs are active. And then in sync, we're going to go over here to MIDI sync project settings. And we want to make sure that uh, we're picking the MIDI for the launch pad that's going to be receiving MIDI signal from Logic. Then let's go to recording. And in recording, we want to make sure that we are activating the audio auto the mix channel. And once we have that done, that is step one. Step two is going to be over here to assign the MIDI channels. For the ultra, we're going to uh, assign channel one, synth channel two, alchemy channel three. And then for the last one, the membrane, we're going to use channel four. This is crucial. Without this next step, this will never work. And then you're not going to be able to unlock what's going on inside your launch pad. Don't get intimidated as well, because we're going to go into the environment. And in the environment, we're going to have to do a little bit of routing. We're going to go over here. And the first thing that we need to do, and this is like a little bit intimidating, because once you look at this environment, then you're like, oh, wow, this is like coding or like whatever. It's not really like that. Don't be scared of deleting things. We are going to delete these two like instruments in here. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to make this bigger so we're able to like see what is going on here. So the physical input is kind of like controllers that are connected to logic or uh, interfaces. OK, right over here, we're able to see that we have the sum. It like sums all the MIDI data, which is what's happening right now once we decide to actually start doing this. Don't be intimidated by this. I'll walk you through it. So next part, what we need is we need a channel splitter. OK, channel splitter. So the first part is we're going to count down. So sum is one. The 500R8 is number two. And then the launch pad MIDI is number three. We want to make sure that we are clicking on number three and bringing it into the channel splitter. So after the channel splitter, the next step is that we are going to actually get a new transformer. We're going to actually need four transformers. So the process is pretty simple. Once you have your transformer, you go over here, you click on it twice, and it's going to open up this window. And right after that, you're going to go over here, click on fix, and then you're going to change the channel to channel one. And that's uh, transformer number one. And we're going to call it MIDI Uno. And then once we have this done, we're going to count one, two. And the second one is the one that we're going to connect to MIDI one. And then we're going to send this one to the sequencer. So now to test this, what we're going to do next is we're going to go over here, preferences. We want to make sure that in our control surface, it's set up co correctly. So, so over here, this is important because if not, we're not going to be able to use the uh, actual session mode of this. We want to make sure that the output port and the input port are set up to the uh, Launchpad Pro DAW. And then after that, after that is done, we're going to go back to the sequencer channel one. And now if we mark all of them, the only thing that we're going to be hearing here, it's a uh, Ultra beat, right? 
all of them are selected. If I put, you know, like uh, sequencer two, if I click on it, nothing happens, right? So let's go back here. Now we're actually able to use alter beat and all the different uh, like sounds that it has as drum pads, which is just really unique and awesome. Next step, let's go back to the environment and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna click on click and ports and then we're gonna bring in of those transformers. So again, you can do this at your own pace. Uh, fix channel two, good. You can change the name to, or if you know the machine that you wanna use, then you can name it like that. Once we're done here, MIDI two, we send it to the sequencer and once the sequencer is done, now if we look over here on where like the channels are, the synth is the one that is getting, getting affected. Now sequencer one, ultra beat, sequencer two is gonna be our synth. Okay, now let's go to sequencer three. If I click on it, nothing's happening because we haven't connected it. Obviously, you know, you know, you guys know where I'm going with this. So now that this is done, I'm going to go to sequencer four. Go to sequencer three. So now you have separated the sequencers, which is like step one of like getting the most out of like this beautiful machine here and the launch pad that we are ready. You don't really need to be playing with logic. You can actually start building your tracks with uh, with the launch pad by itself. So let's go in and let's make a, a quick beat, right? Forward to the floor. Okay, so let's pick this one. A little groove there. So synth, let's go and pick this one that we created last week. So over here in sequencer, right, we can actually go and pick like the scale that we want to use. So. Okay, so let's pick this one, generate the groove. Okay, so now we have a groove going, right? So the next thing that we're gonna do, and then once we have this looped, sequencer three, this one I actually wanna use it as a pad, so let's go to alchemy. Okay, kinda like it. So the other cool thing about this machine, right, is that you can generate just one pattern just a little bit of mutation and just see it fluctuate all over the place. And I think that this is something that makes it, this machine unique. So let's go pick, let's generate a pattern, right? Okay. So we have all of those notes in that chord make it super long, and then let's add a little bit of mutation. And let's see how that sounds. So as you see, this continues to evolve, which is absolutely amazing. So let's stop it here. Now let's go to membrane. So bring it down a little bit. Okay, and we can do the exact same thing, right? Let's go to mutation. Let's pick this one. 
Hmm. Maybe not. Mm, I kind of like the idea of that. But one thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually change the probability for them to be happening in different... So like it varies. Okay, so now that we have this going, I think it's only important for us to record this. So the reason why I'm going to record it here and I'm not going to record it directly into like session view is because I want you to see, even if you don't feel comfortable doing the session view, how you would record this directly into Logic in like the normal uh, DAW mode. Don't be scared because right now, as you're going to see, it's going to record only in one track. But once you click stop, boom, it separates it. All right, ready? Okay, everything is separated to its own separate channel, and this is pretty awesome. Right, we're going to record 16 bars so you guys can see how the evolution of the different notes happens. So let's go ahead and let's do this. So now that we are here, right, we have 16 bars over here in the ultra beat. You guys can see we have the hats and then we have the kick and then we have here over here the synth and recorded like the pattern, alchemy. This is the beautiful thing about this thing of like the mutation is that it evolves. It evolves the patterns, right? This is just absolutely amazing. Let's quantize it just to make sure that it sounds good. And then right here on the membrane, it also switched and changed the patterns, which is great. Okay, so now that we're ready with a pattern that we like, the next beautiful step of this thing, right? So as I was here editing this video, <laughs> it was getting a little bit too long. So I just decided to like chop it up into two parts. Uh, so hopefully this has been useful to you guys so far at the next video, video number two of this series. We're going to talk a little bit about how to use the launch pad with uh, Logic Pro, like all the loops and everything that you can do with it. All right, guys, have a good weekend. Bye.